Hey guys, it's Danielle. Welcome to a new series with I'm Not Gonna Lie called Shelter Diaries. Smack dab in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, we here in California are under a shelter-in-place order. No going out, no socializing, and definitely no in-person podcasting. I'm using this extra time and space to tap in regularly and keep my peeps entertained, hopefully. Join me for bite-sized episodes that include phone calls with fellow self-isolators, as well as the ramblings about things that are keeping me up at night. If you have something you want to ask, share, or inform, reach out to me on the interwebs at I'm Not Gonna Lie, and maybe I'll touch on a few in upcoming episodes. Thanks for joining. See you on the other side of this big old mess. everybody. It's Danielle. It is March 24th. It's Tuesday. Welcome to another shelter in place update on my shelter diaries. Today, uh, we woke up to find all of our county parks are closed now, our city and county and state parks, which I think is, was the thing that was keeping many of us sane. Um, unfortunately, People also weren't keeping the social distancing guidelines in mind. So some of the parks over the weekend got really busy. I ended up going for a hike yesterday with a friend. And there weren't many people out actually where we were hiking. But in any case, not long after I got back, um, they closed all the parks. <laughs> so I won't be doing any hiking. Um, now I'm just trying to keep tabs on who's wandering around my neighborhood. And when I see a break in the action, I go for a walk around the block. So, um, you know, things are getting real. It seems like we need to start getting more strict with our, um, self isolation, um, more, more accurately staying in the freaking house. So up until now, I've been wandering down to Keller street co-work just to go into my recording studio and do some of these episodes. And I decided yesterday to um, bring all of my mobile equipment home. And so I set up this nifty little studio in my attic, which is actually working quite nicely. So I may have to think about this (laughs) more long term. So, um, all right, so I'm going (laughs) to dive into a question. I had some people asking me questions on social media more accurately, I was begging for people to ask me questions about either anything they wanted to know outside of the podcast, or maybe there's been some episodes of I'm Not Gonna Lie that you've heard in the past that you've got some questions about as well. We all know that um, I'm kind of an open book, although there's some pretty real life shit history that I don't really dive into quite often, actually ever on the podcast. Um, so while I tend not to have a filter, there are actually lots of things about me that I don't share. Um, and so I thought shelter diaries might be a good opportunity for me to do that. So any questions, I'm happy to try and answer them. But anyway, when some, somebody asked this question, um, and it was such a great one. We've all had a lot of extra time off. Well, most of us have had a lot of extra time off and, um, It's really hard to get motivated. So this particular question comes from a local artist in town who um, I think it might be struggling a little bit with, oh, I have all this extra creative time, yet I can't get motivated to do any of it. It's interesting timing that this question came up because earlier today I did a open work session on Zoom with the Keller Street member. So I just kind of opened up a Zoom room and invited everybody to come on for an hour and we could either sit quietly and just look at the screen and see each other and work alongside each other or we could have uh, discussions or conversations. And only a few people showed up, but it turned into a little bit of a coaching session for me. Um, Many of you don't know this, but I used to actually 
coach clients um, on productivity, not only actual tools, uh, how to get creative or space, how to create a space that allows you to be productive, but also um, habits and mindsets and stuff like that, that really help toward productivity. So I did a lot of work with clients on this. um, And we ended up chatting a little bit about this because so many people are home right now trying to either figure out how to get into a work schedule or how to fill their time without going crazy listening to the news about uh, what's going on in the world. Um, And so I had actually a couple of ideas that I'd like to share that have been working for me. Now, this is an extenuating circumstance. We're not used to being forced to stay home, not go to this, you know, not go outside, not drive places, um, and still try and be productive while the world seems to be kind of crumbling around us. And so the rules are a little bit different. There's a lot of theories about how productive you can be, for example, if you work for 50 minutes and take a 10 minute break, and then you work for 50 minutes and you take a 10 minute break. Some people like to work really deep and focused for a couple of hours and then take a little break. Um, here's what I've found Right now, we all have a little bit of a white noise going on inside our bodies, inside our minds. And the white noise is this COVID epidemic, um, pandemic, and it's keeping us all a little bit distracted, even if you don't think you're actively thinking about it. And with that white noise, um, there's energy being spent in your mind, in your body. Um, It's taking up a little bit of bandwidth that you don't realize it's taking up. So what I was recommending to this particular member was to, first of all, very first thing in the morning, just like you would on a normal work day, get up, get dressed, eat your breakfast, do your shower, do all the things that you normally would before you start your day, do it. Even if you're working from home, put your dang shoes on, like don't, don't walk downstairs in your slippers or into the, whatever your home office into your, in your slippers, get ready, put your earrings on, put your makeup on if that's normally what you do, but keep that routine. Block your time, Um, block it differently. And so here's what I'm saying. Block work sessions that are equal or less time than your quote rest sessions. So we all have this list of things like, oh, we're, you know, we have all this extra time. I want to read these books or I want to listen to these podcasts or I want to write this story or do these puzzles or or whatever it is. And we have all this extra time. So part of us is are exciting, are excited because we're like, Oh, I'm going to do the things. Um, then you get through your work day and you get to the end of the day and you didn't take an extra particular amount of time to not only have your work breaks, but do your extra things. And then you get to the end of the day and you get wrapped up in the news of the day, and then you start feeling guilty. Well, I had all this extra time and I didn't do anything with it. Um, That's not helping your productivity. So what I've been doing is scheduling one and a half hour work sessions with a one to one and a half hour break session. And that break is the typical, you know, go to the bathroom, stretch my legs, have a glass of water, have a snack. Um, And then I'm doing something out of the ordinary, that's allowing me to feel creative. For me, it's creativity. Um, And so I'm working on a Lego masterpiece, or I read a chapter or two in a book or or whatever it is. So those things that are compiling on that list that are going to stress you out at the end of this when you're like, wow, I had all this extra time, and I didn't do it. Schedule those into your day. Um, For those of you who are artists at for a living. That is your work schedule. That's your work day. So if you're a painter, block your time, put an hour and a half in the morning, an hour and a half in the middle of the day, an hour and a half in the afternoon, where you're quote working. I mean, that is your work. Paint something. It, it, even if it sucks, just do it. Um, turn some music on. You have to kind of really push yourself to get into that space and just start. And it doesn't feel like you want to do it because you're not motivated because there's all this bullshit white noise going on in the background. But you have to you really have to honor those time blocks. Also, your work days can be shorter. You don't have to sit down at 9am or 8am and work till five or six. 
start at nine, end at three, start at 10, end at three, um, add at the end of the day before you rush into the kitchen and start making dinner, add a half an hour in there to take a break. Honor the transitions that you did have before. So if you had a transition from work to home and it was 20 minutes, use that 20 minutes to transition to the next thing that you're doing at home. Same thing in the morning. Whatever your regular commute time was, take that time now. Listen to a podcast or listen to a music station or you know, write in your journal. Do a thing for that. Let's just say your commute was 20 minutes. Do something for that 20 minutes. That's not work. That's not getting ready for work. Um, and so you have to kind of just, you have to time block, I think. So those are just some ideas. There's some things that are working for me. I think they can work for those of you, but just remember this is not normal. So don't try and start working from home and do your normal everyday schedule. It doesn't work that way. Keep in mind that there's a bunch of white noise going on. We don't know what the fuck is happening. Um, and it's kind of keeping us a little bit distracted. So it's taking up time and energy and you have to honor that. All right. That's my two cents, um, on how to get motivated and it's a practice. Just, you have to try it every day. So really quick, or maybe not really quick, something I want to talk to you guys about. Um, I have a writing project that I may have alluded to on a couple of occasions. I met somebody recently who, um, is in, who's a professional, uh, speaker, speaker coach. She's in the industry and, um, and she's integral in the, in the TED community for TED talks and TEDx talks. And I met her recently. She heard a little bit of a story of mine that she, when she interviewed me on one of her podcasts and later circled back around and said that she thought I should try and turn that into a TED talk. So I, have been kind of thinking about it um, more and more seriously as time goes on. I've also been thinking about finally pursuing these keynote conversations that I like to do as well. And in order to get started, I need to kind of <laughs> write the story that I want to tell. I need to, you know, decide what the story is, write the story, and then practice the story before I pitch it. Well, I'm stuck. So talk about motivation. Like we were talking about earlier, I'm stuck getting started on the writing. So I had this brilliant idea that I was going to invite a friend to the podcast studio. And I was going to just let him sit sit in front of me and I was going to tell the story to get started. And then I was going to transcribe it onto paper. And that was going to be kind of like how I get started writing. That was my brilliant idea. And so I invited a friend that I really trust and we sat down with a glass of something. I think we were drinking whiskey maybe and just started talking and I started the conversation kind of where in my head I thought the TED talk should start like right at the time of um, the trauma. There was a trauma that had happened and this is the conversation I wanted to have and he called me out on my shit right away. He's like, you can't just like dive into that. He's like, you need to start talking from the beginning. And for you, the beginning is probably your childhood. So let's just, he's like, I got all the time in the world. Let's just start talking. So he called me out on it. Um, so just today I, I went through the transcription process. This was like a two and a half hour conversation that we had, which of course didn't cover everything, but it was a good start. As I was reading the transcripts and listening to the audio I came across a a few clips that I thought might be fun to share with you guys. And when I say fun, I mean fun, not fun, but (laughs) vulnerable and maybe shed a little light on Danielle um, in areas that I don't typically shine lights on. And again, this is definitely a work in progress, so I'm I'm probably not going to put a whole lot out there, but I found a couple clips that were quite interesting. So I'm going to play this clip. It's a couple of minutes long. I'll circle back after and I just have a couple of thoughts and maybe a couple of questions for you listeners out there. Um, And then we'll wrap it up. Okay, here we go. I can't even imagine. (laughs) Like, honestly, when I was telling you earlier today about the healing and I was like, I was going on about how I wrote all the letters 